Okay, today I am going to handwrite some quilt labels. And I'm doing this because the cost of the uh, inkjet printer fabric has really shot up in price and I just didn't want to pay it the last time I was in the store. So I decided I'd do the freezer paper method. So I have ironed a piece of freezer paper onto a piece of bleached muslin and um, I've got some lined loose leaf notebook paper. When I do this on the computer, I put four boxes on an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. Now I cut out my freezer paper wrong. This is, um, on this one anyway, is 10 by, I think nine, yeah, 10 by nine. Let me see, I've got another one here that a little bit longer. Okay, this is 11 by nine, I believe. Okay, let me use this one. Okay, so this is 11 by 9. And here's my 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper. So, you know, it's comparable. It's a, probably not exactly 8.5 by 11. It's supposed to be. It's 10 and a half. It's 8 by 10 and a half. So, it's a little bit off. But I do want to draw some guidelines on here. And I could do this on my paper also. So this is nine. So if I go at four and a half, and I'm using a micron pen, this is a zero eight nib. So it's, it's a wider nib. And let's see, it's 11 inches. So I want to go five and a half. So I've got my lines there for four. And then I'm going to go in by a quarter of an inch on each side of those lines so that I remember that there are um, seam allowances I need to consider. So I don't want to write outside of that line. If you do this on your notebook paper, you won't have to draw this on every single sheet that you use of uh, freezer paper. You won't have to do that. So that's uh, something to consider. And you can use um, whatever kind of permanent pins you want to that will work on fabric. Okay, so now I have all my guidelines. Okay, so now I'm ready to write my labels. So I'm just going to turn the fabric side up and I'm going to lay my paper down. I've got a stack here. Uh, just I don't want it to bleed through onto my table, but you don't really need that. And then I'm just going to line paper up on there with one of the horizontal lines so that everything is squared up. And now I'm ready to write on my labels and I kind of already wrote something right there. But now all I need to do is write the information I want on there. And so I got, I'm going to have to center. If I center everything, I have to kind of do it by eye. I could, you know, put a mark. I can put a mark here so I know where the center is. So these are about four and a quarter inches. So two and an eighth. I'm going to do this in the hem area. So here, I know that's center from, it should be anyway. It looks off now. 
right. Two and an eighth. Yeah, this is going to put two and a half on this one. So two and an eighth is here. Okay, so I know these two marks are my center. And line everything up and position it where it's comfortable to write. And then I can write the information I want on my label. And okay, so this I need a label for my Lone Star quilt. So you can print it or you can write it. And just take your time. So there's my Lone Star. And I finished it in 2020. And I'm using two lines. Go ahead and print this information. And then write my name. And then you can write anything else you want, and you can make this smaller than what I'm doing. I'm making this label pretty big. Um, I usually put the city where I'm living at the time because I have moved around. And then I usually put like peace or unknown in which I don't know the, the person's name who pieced this so I could write her name on here. I kind of wish I'd raise this up a little bit, but I'm going to put this down here. So there is one label. It isn't fancy, but um, it gives me the information that I want on my quilt. The name of the quilt, um, the date, who was quilted by, where I lived at the time, and piece or unknown. So I'm going to do that with some of my other ones and I'm going to turn my paper around so what's throwing me off is the blank space up here. So let me turn it this way and do another one. And let's see which one, I don't have my list with me down here, I'm in the studio and my list is up by my computer so and then that's upstairs. Um, okay, the tea party quilt, because I just finished that. So let's do a little bit smaller Lakeside Quilters, I believe, is what they were called. And this was um, Kimberlyn City. So that's where Lakeside Quilters of Kimberlyn City. Okay, so that's two. So these don't take long, it's just prepping. Prepping, you need freezer paper, you need fabric you want to write on, and make sure your fabric is pre-washed. 
um, you need your iron so that you can press your freezer paper onto your fabric and I suggest when you um, press it to press the paper side first so that it helps the the wax melt onto your fabric and then flip it over and press it again from this side to kind of smooth it out because you will have some uh, wrinkles and bubbles and stuff sometimes so uh, that gets it nice and smooth uh, use a pin you're comfortable with. I use the Micron pins that work great. Um, there are fabric pins you can try. I haven't tried them in a long time. I did try them at one point and they um, tended to bleed out in the fabric, the weave of the fabric, so I didn't like those. But it may have just been the brand and I can't even rem remember what brand they were. This was years and years ago. So do a test on the fabric you want to use for your labels. and. Um, you know, just take a little time, um, try different things, you know, if you want, you can add, you know, decorative elements to this. You can put curly cues in there, you can draw little flowers, you can draw the, a quilt block, you know, whatever you want to on these uh, to make them unique, make them pretty. And now all I have to do is cut out along the lines I've drawn and peel off the freezer paper and um, sew them onto the back of my quilts. I've got my list done, so now I can cut these apart. And I'm going to just take these to my rotary mat and just going to cut along the center line. Okay, I have all my quilt labels now, so um, all I need to do is to peel off the the backing, which is the freezer paper, and that's uh, shouldn't be too difficult. We'll see. Yeah, there we go. Just have to peel it off and then it'll be ready to um, oops, press, press under the edges, the raw edges, and um, trim off those threads. And they'll be ready to put on my quilt. So this is a quick way to uh, make labels and it's not very expensive. Uh, a roll of freezer paper isn't, doesn't cost very much and it'll, it'll last a long time. I've had this roll of freezer paper for a couple of years and um, I still have quite a bit on the roll. So Now on these, you might have noticed um, the lines I drew are on the front and that's just because I forgot to turn the fabric over but that actually gives me a good pressing line so um, there's nothing wrong with that. And there are all my labels and all ready to go on my quilts and I can press under the quarter inch or just leave it and uh, just you know press it as I go as I sew them on but they're ready to go so Here's an idea of another way you can make your labels, just to hand hand uh, write them and use your freezer paper, uh, a Pigma pen, um, and then you're ready to go. Thanks for watching. For more quilting ideas, click on the video links. And to keep up with my latest projects, click on the subscribe button. I hope to see you again soon.